G'day and welcome to Dave's Water Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to paint your own wood effect on wooden propellers from the First World War. This is my Wingnut Wings Fokker 4 and this is the propeller that I've painted. So I'm going to show you how to do it. It's a really simple technique, it's a really forgiving technique and it gives you great wood grain effects. So, how do we do it? Let's get stuck in and I'll show you how. Today I'm going to show you how I paint World War One propellers. Um, it's a laminated wood effect, so you get sort of dark light, dark light, sort of sandwiched in the way that they made the original propellers. Um, yeah, uh, this is for my Wingnut Wings Fokker E4, and it's a nice little propeller. I had actually started painting it with uh, Tamiya enamel colour and then I realised, oh, that means I can't do any washes very easily, any oil washes. So I'm going to paint it entirely, I just scrubbed it off, I'm going to paint it entirely with acrylics. Originally I had planned to paint it uh, desert yellow, but again, like I said, that's an enamel colour, it's not going to be good for me for oil washes later. So I've got some acrylics here, white, yellow oxide, raw sienna. I don't have the exact colour I want, but I'm just going to mix it up and get something similar to this. That feels pretty close, so I'm just going to paint the whole propeller with this yellow colour. Um, just using a brush, not mucking around, airbrushing or anything like that. Um, indeed, brush strokes in this is probably going to work well for stimulating, for stimulating, for simulating wood grain. So, there's the start. I'm not going to bore you with the whole thing. You know how to paint with a paintbrush. I'll come back when it's done. Here is my propeller, painted a nice natural sort of wood colour. So, as I was saying, these propellers were originally put together kind of like this laminate sandwich. So, once I had the big plank of wood, they put another plank of wood, another plank of wood, another plank of wood, laminate it all and then carve out the shape of, the prope of a propeller. And we want to replicate that effect. So what I'm going to do next is get quite a fine tipped pencil, the mechanical pencil works best, and keeping the tip at a set height, so we're not going to move the tip up or down, up or down, up or down, I'm going to keep it at the same height and just draw a contour all the way around the propeller, keeping that at the same height all the way. It's a little bit tricky at the ends. You get the idea, you can see the line there. And then we'll do another one, a little bit higher up. So that's just the pencil lying flat on its side now. And same again. And basically these give you a little cheat guide for when it comes time to paint those laminate sort of sandwich layers. <laughs> I hope that made sense. I was busy chatting while I did it. So, let's get some focus so you can actually see. So it's pretty faint. Look, I haven't done them very you know, deeply into the wood, but gives me really great cheat lines to keep it as a perfect layer, layer, layer. Done. Easy. Next, I'm just going to grab my burnt sienna acrylics and paint those. I'll show you that in a tick. This is the effect at the end there. So, any brush strokes in there, totally cool. They're all just going to add more character as we go. And it looks like a sandwich. The levels are pretty pretty straight. Um, check out any references you can find online and it'll give you more idea of what it looked like. But as a start, well, as a start, I'm happy with that. And like I said, any of those brush strokes and stuff, it's all good. It all adds character. Alright, next step. Right, now here is where it gets to the fun bit. So, here's our lovely wooden propeller. And yeah, it's looking fine. If you really wanted, you could just leave it at that. It's 
okay, it's nothing special. Here's the fun bit. Get some oil colours. Get some burnt umber. It's the best colour for wood. Haven't done this in a long, long time. So here's a little splodge of burnt umber, and I'm just going to do a gentle oil wash. So I'm just thinning it with some thinners, just plain old mineral terps. It is nothing at all special here. And we're going to do a oil wash. And we're going to do a number of oil washes. And this is going to add depth and richness to our wood. So you can already see the difference on this side that's had one compared to this side that hasn't. It's just, it's richer, it's warmer. I'm going to keep doing that on the other side. And that's the extent of it. Keep it nice and thin. You don't want to be globbing on really thick oil paint. I mean, you can. The beauty of having done an acrylic base is that there's nothing stopping you from cleaning it up. You know, this thinner is not going to affect your acrylic base at all. Yeah. I'm going to do the bottom as well. I'm going to let this dry a little bit first. But yeah, you can see here, if I focus, you can see the sort of richness that it imparts. And that's the fun bit. So, do as many coats as you want. I'm going to do a couple more and then come back and show you. Here it is, after five coats, I think it was four or five coats, washes, sorry, four or five washes with the oil paint. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Looks good to me. Um, I'll show you in a moment a couple of ticks, uh, tricks and tips on how to get the effect that I've got here, but it's pretty easy and it's very, very forgiving. So the next thing I'm going to do is cover this with a gloss varnish. Just use whatever gloss top coat you want to use. Totally cool, totally up to you. Um, but yeah, I'll show you right now how to get some nice effects. I don't want to go through and stuff this one up by playing with it because I'm really happy with how it's looking. So I'm going to leave this one and do a test piece for you now. But yeah, that looks like wood to me. If you'd know better, you'd say that's wood. That's wood, Dave! That's what you'd say. <laughs> Okay, so here's my three top tips for you. Um, here's the test mule I've put together. This side has had no oil washes. This side has had washes. So, top tip number one. Make sure that your acrylic paint is thick enough. So you don't want to see any bits of raw plastic through that. Pretty obvious, but yeah, it'll save you hassles in the long run. Top tip number two is, if you don't like what's happening, when it's a little bit dry, you can just get in there with your brush, make sure it doesn't have too much on it, put a little bit of thinness on it, just getting rid of most of that, and then you can play around with it and try and get more authentic kind of wood grain effects. So, I'm loving those effects there. Well, <laughs> I'm knocking over my camera. Okay, so I'm loving those wood effects that you get there. Really love that. So, yeah, if you're not happy with it, play around with it because you never know what you'll get. So this is just very, very delicate, very light, and it kind of lifts it off. Really like that, that kind of wood grain effect that you get there. Like I said, this is just a test mule. I've got nothing invested in this. Yeah, that to me already feels 
like a lot better. Let's see if we can get some focus. Come on. Yeah. So suddenly that's feeling a lot more wood-ish. And my third tip is if you really hate what you've done, get a good old thick coating of thinners on your brush and you can just get rid of the oil wash that was there. And it pretty much takes you back to plain old basics acrylic. And then you can start again. So it's really forgiving. It's a great forgiving technique. So this has had two coats of oil wash over it. Oil filter. And yeah, it's a very, very forgiving technique. Three top tips. You can't go wrong, basically. Okay, so I have done a gloss varnish over the paint, over the wood. Now my next step is to paint the metal boss in the center there black. Plain old flat black. Nothing special. Totally up to you what you use. I'm using Tamiya enamels. We've finished most of our weathering now, so you can use whatever you want. Yeah, look, I'm not going to paint that the whole time. Here's the reverse boss, painted black already, it goes in the back there. I'm going to paint the front one black. I'll come back in a tick. Okay, second last step. Once my black has dried, I need to paint this a steel colour. So for me, I haven't actually got steel, but what I have got is a 50-50 mix of aluminium and gunmetal. And it's a pretty messy little mixing palette here, but this is the 50 50 mix here. So just combine the two colors into something that to me looks kind of steel. And then we're going to do some dry brushing. Yep, I'm happy with that. So I'm sure you all know how to dry brush, but in case you don't, get most of it off on a bit of paper. Get some focus, and then just gently dry brush it over the top. So you want to make sure you don't cover all of your black. And to me, that's a pretty convincing steel effect now. Okay, so that's how easy it is. Second piece here, the little back boss. Exactly the same treatment, except don't drop it. <laughs> Oh, goodness. So exactly the same. I hope that's in focus for you. And just a little dry brushing. So a hell of a lot of that black is still visible. But you just get that really nice steel brushed effect. Yep. Okay. That is the second last step. Once that dries a little bit more, time for our last step. Nearly done. Oh, I should mention, by the way, really quickly, if you don't have steel, or the instructions don't call for steel, or you want something else, I don't know, paint it silver, paint it gunmetal, paint it aluminium, whatever effect you want, whatever works for you, I think that works nicely. But yeah, that's not important. That is not written in stone. Right, our last step is a tiny, tiny pin wash on the nuts and bolts on the metal here. So, let's get some focus. So, I have some Van Dyke Brown Artist Oils and I keep them in a little jar and I keep it, you know, I splodge in some, some thinners whenever I need it and it keeps it nice and thin so you can see it on the tip of my brush here and it's just a gentle little pin wash around those nuts and bolts and the central hub just to make them look a little bit dirty. That's it. Same with the reverse. Little tiny pin wash, that one was perhaps a bit extreme. And that gives it just a nice slightly oiled up, slightly greasy look. Oiled up and greasy, that's the look I'm going for. Um, a slightly sort of, you know, dirty, used 
not pristine look. So I am going to let that dry and then I'm going to stick on the decals which go here and here but not every kit has those and show you the final results. And here is the finished result mounted on the plane. So I'm pretty happy with it. It looks good. Um, it's all come up nicely. I would, uh, if anything, I would possibly not even bother with the gloss coat. Up to you. But I felt that the semi-gloss effect that the oil paints gave actually looked a little bit more realistic. But I guess if you're being a stickler for detail, these things were painted gloss. So, technically, yes, they did have a varnish on them. Technically, probably should have it. But yeah, I find it's a great technique. It's very forgiving, as I said. Follow those three tips. You can't go far wrong. You get a great wood effect overall. And it's also just a lot of fun to do. It's really interesting and kind of gives you a chance to be a bit artistic with modelling, which, you know, chances like that are few and far between. Enjoy it when it comes. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, do please chime in below. But otherwise, it's a bulletproof method for building and painting your own laminated wood propellers. Get stuck in and enjoy. If, um, if you haven't already thought about it, please consider joining the Mod Squad. It's my members-only discount system, and it means you get 10% off at a range of great retailers. Check my website, links following, and yeah, it's worth doing. Alright guys, chat to you next time. See ya.